Hi guys. Um, my sermon today is called um, Anderson, and then I'm going to talk a bit about you were loved. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for what you're about to do and what you're about to be to us in our lives and what you're about to show us you are. I thank you for all of it. I thank you for being the I am that I am, which means you are what we need. Whatever we need for our lives, you are. Um, cause us to gain the understandings that we need for our lives, because whatever understanding I need is not the understanding that the other person needs. Cause us to hear the same words, but apply the meaning that you've meant for us in our lives, oh God. And I pray, Lord God, that you will just dwell with us in a mighty way. Just send this along the airwaves and internet waves, oh God. Cause the right people to see the this sermon. Cause your love to abide with us and cause us to know that the most per that the most important being that we are loved by is you, God. Because you are love. You speak love. You you germinate love. That's where your essence is. Father, we praise you and we bless you. Speak to me, speak through me. Hide me behind the cross, oh God. Take me to a other levels of understanding in my own life through this sermon. Amen. Ca cause me as the preacher to understand purpose and destiny in a new way because of the sermon. In the name of Jesus, amen. Um, hey guys, this sermon is called Understanding. Anderson, and I will talk about uh, you were loved a bit at the end, or in the second half of the sermon. Uh, I was watching a movie a few weeks ago about Hans Christian Anderson, who is who was a children's, um, not just a children's writer, but he was mostly famous uh, for doing children's stories. He, he's from Denmark, and he, he, according to the movie, let me say that, according to the movie, uh, which for any of you who have YouTube Premium, it's free. Uh, just type in Hans Christian Andersen and you can see it for free. It's from it's from the fifties, so and it's a musical. It's a great movie. I love old movies and old stuff like that. It's a great movie to watch. So anyway, um, this guy he was a, a shoemaker. Uh, he made shoes, but in the midst of making shoes, he had an amazing gift for telling stories to children. So the movie opens in um, in Denmark, and he's got all these children around him, and he's telling this story um what we know as the en the emperor's new clothes uh the the story of the emperor's new clothes is basically um this emperor was to was told that that new clothes would be made for him 
and then um and then people were so excited to to see his new clothes and then he was wearing nothing at all. It's been told um it's been told over and over again. Disney did a remake of it called The Emperor's New Groove. That's a great movie too. And uh yes, I will get to the word of God in a minute. Uh, yes, this is a sermon, although it doesn't seem like it. So, he, he told the story, what we know of now, was the Emperor's New Clothes. And then, to these children, the children loved him, because he would always tell these amazing stories. And, um, but the adult in the town where he grew up in, they didn't like him at all. They thought he was foolish and they, and the principal wanted him out of town. So, and he lived with and a boy that he adopted and the boy that he adopted heard that um the adults really wanted him out of town. So, um, so he was, um, uh, he was kicked out of the town. Uh, no, no, the boy who he lived with heard that they wanted him kicked out of town. So what the boy did was actually say, you know what, you should go to the city, you should move to the city without telling him why, without telling him that um, they wanted him kicked out of town. Look for the people who see what's in you more than you do. Because I believe that God always puts these people in your life that see uh, what's in you more than you do, and they just are designed to push you into your destiny. And that's what I learned from this part. And to back up, when he was singing to the these children and telling this story to these children, uh, people thought it was odd. Uh, Oftentimes, your, what God has designed you to do uh, for your life is going to seem odd to other people. So, uh, Nobody is designed to see your destiny and your purpose but you. So don't be surprised if you have a purpose and other people can't see it. Because you don't look like the person who could, who would be able to do that or you don't have the right education or you don't, whatever. Don't be surprised that when it comes to purpose, um, people don't understand you. They're not called to understand you. They're not called to see what you see. I was talking to the Lord the other day about my purpose and what he's put in me. And I'm like, people don't understand. Every time I say, send an email, they say no. And it seems to be blocked everywhere I go. Every email I send, it seems to be blocked. Every story idea I send, I don't get an answer back. And when I do, it's no and and whatever. I, I and I I was I was saying to the Lord how I don't understand. You've given me this. Why did you give me this without giving me the 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 resources to get them? out there or whatever without giving me the proper background or the proper 
people. He said, they're not designed to see what I've given you. And they can't see what I'm giving you. But at the right time, I will elevate you to where I want you to be. Just keep going. Just keep preaching. And send those story ideas. Send those movie. Put down those movie ideas. Put down those story ideas. Because what I've shown you in your head will come to pass. Don't worry about how. It will come to pass. Uh, So that's what the Lord said to me, and it and it brought back this movie of how the people in the town didn't understand him. The adults in the town were just thinking that he was keeping their children away from school. Oh, how how dare he! He's so odd. All he needs to make his shoes. What's he doing telling the children stories? And you'll get critics. But just remember the critics are there to refine you. They're not there to make you give up. They may think they're there to make you give up, but they're just there to refine you. So let criticism constructive or or otherwise, refine you. Like, okay. So now he's, he's been chased out of town, right? To the city. So he gets into gets into um, some trouble. I for, I forget the trouble he gets into now. He gets into some trouble in the city. And um, I think it's with uh, someone. Uh, he w- goes to market and gets into some trouble. And then when he gets into some trouble, he goes to j- he goes to jail. And then when he's in jail, um, uh, he he sees this young girl. Outside of the jail, and then when he sees, um, uh, when he see no, first, first he he sees this young girl outside the no, he sees this young girl outside the jail. And then looking very sad and whatever. And then he does this. um, And then he has a little cloth. And he puts the cloth over his thumb. And starts using his thumb and, and making up a little song. Which is... Uh, the story of Thumbelina. And he's in jail, and now he's singing to this little kid who's outside the jail just wanting to make her smile. And what he's doing when he's in jail just wanting to make her smile, this little kid is smiling and all that stuff he brightened up her day. So when when God's destiny when God has a calling on your life, you can do it in any season. You can do it anywhere. You can do it uh while while you're high and while you're low and while things are just things are just going crazy and whatever because whatever that 
thing is inside of you. It's just in you, and you can't purpose, purpose, what people call purpose, or uh, your calling is more than a vocation. It's something uh, that God put inside of you that no matter what state, what age or stage you are, you just have to do it. No matter if you're sick or no matter whatever is going on in your life, you just have to do it. Um, can you believe that uh, you see me here now? Um, but can you believe this morning I was feeling nauseous? I was like, how am I going to preach this sermon? How am I going to do this? But I'm compelled to do it because I have, there's a purpose inside of me to preach the gospel to you guys and to do it the way that I'm doing it. So I do it whether I'm sick. And I remember a time that um, Microsoft had downloaded something uh, funky on my computer and it caused my um, my software my software to make things bigger. It caused it not to work. So I did a sermon with the computer, small, small, small. I did it that way because no matter what happens in my life, no matter if I'm crying the day before, no matter if I'm laughing, no thing, no matter if I have money in the bank, no matter what's going on, Sunday morning, I'm here because it's my purpose to do so. And if I cannot be here, I upload the sermon as soon as I can. Because e even when I couldn't get into my YouTube account for a month, I still still recorded those sermons and put them on Facebook. And when I was able to, I put them up on YouTube. Why? Because this purpose is in me. I have to, like, it's like I'm compelled to preach. You know what I mean? I'm compelled to preach whether I'm sick or whether I'm well, whatever whether I have zero money in the bank or whether I have a lot of money in the bank, whether, you know, purpose compels you. Even when life is going crazy, even when life is going crazy, I take this so seriously that no matter what is going on in my life, I'm here Sunday mornings and sometimes Wednesday. Sometimes the word that God has given me is so deep within me that it is just it's just something I have to do. So a lot of people are like, "How do I find my purpose? How do I find my purpose?" You don't find your purpose. Your purpose finds you. What, and the key question that everyone needs to, to ask themselves is, what do you think about in the morning doing bef before anything else? What is at your core? Like, everyone has something that at their core, it when somebody mentions that thing, your whole face lights up. Everything becomes clear. When someone mentions songwriting or um, 
playwriting or a sermon. When I when I hear two two preachers talking, or when when I hear a songwriter talking about the journey of a song, or when I hear a playwright saying, this is what's going on, something in me just rises up, because that's my purpose. It's like, yes, it's me, yes, I feel that way, yes, and, I, and I'm leaning in going, oh my God, and there's this one particular preacher, when he's preaching, I'm kind of, I'm not just listening to the sermon. I'm getting, you know, tendrils. And I'm like, if I was in the room, I would say this. If I was here, I would say that. And I'm just going back and forth. It's like I'm preaching with him in my head. Because all of those things, all of those things, preaching, songwriting, um novel writing, all of those things are just a part are a part of my purpose and a part of my life. And sometimes your purpose can come in multiple streams. So so what makes you excited? What what makes you like you can't, you can't when somebody mentions that thing you just light up like a Christmas tree. You just, you just have to jump in the conversation, or you just have to, you know, you know, you just have to watch this video because it's about your interest or whatever. Usually, your purpose will lie there because it's something. That is, I believe that your purpose is born in you. And your purpose goes past your vocation. Your purpose goes past your vocation. It may have something to do with your vocation, and it may not. Uh, your true purpose maybe something that you start doing on the side and then it may funnel into your purpose later. Purpose can be vocational or not. Your purpose is something that God put in you that you're that you are born with the ability and the know how to do. So what makes your face light up like a Christmas tree. What what when you hear people talk about it, you're like, oh my gosh, I need to get in that conversation. What YouTube video do you watch and say, oh my God, if I was in that room I would enjoy it so much. Cause in that is usually where your purpose lies. So, back to Hans Christian Andersen. So, I told you about him being in jail. So, he gets out of jail. Um, oh, he gets out of jail because uh, the his adopted son hears that um uh they need a shoemaker at the ballet so because they need a shoemaker at the ballet he says well I, the little boy says i know a shoemaker remember i said there are people designed to push you into your destiny and that little boy was designed to push him in his destiny, so because they needed a shoemaker at the ballet, um, 
that was how we got him to jail. So while he was working at the ballet, he just got a job. He got out of jail and he got a job at the ballet. So while he was working at the ballet, he saw this little this little boy. And he couldn't see a child sad and upset without making up a story um, for them. So he saw this little boy with um, who um, had a bald head because of his illness. I would assume it's cancer, but they didn't say that in in the uh, thing. So he saw this little boy just wanting to play with these kids and the kids ran in for recess and and uh, the little boy just stood there. And um, he sang one of his famous children's songs to this little boy because he saw ducks in the pond and he saw this little boy so he sang uh the ugly duckling he told the story of the ugly duckling who was um who turned into a swan the ugly duckling who um the other ducklings wouldn't play with him until he went away and became a swan and then every other duckling um, uh, wanted to play with him. And then he just went on his way. He thought it was another story, another day, and whatever. Um, See, so just keep on operating in where God has you because you never know you. You never know what he's doing. You never know what God's doing. And you don't know what he is um, determining to do with you. Because a few days later, um, he gets a message from a newspaper um, person saying that they want to see him. So it it turns out that the that the head in the newspaper wants to see him because it's the father of the of the little boy he sang the ugly duckling song to, and that that father said he's been sick for a long time and that story really cheered him up and he he just been singing that song and telling that story to himself and really encouraging himself and the and the little the little voice father says do you have any the little voice father shows him uh the newspaper print of his story that he's that he told to his son and asked him whether he had other stories and he says yes so basically you never know when the divine connection is going to happen so all of whatever he went through was to bring him to that place where he was where where he could his stories could be told around the world and i did some research and they said that Um, Although he did write some adult stories, he was most known for stories like uh, The Emperor's New Clothes, Thumbelina, and 
a lot of other children's stories. Just because when I was watching that movie, it was such a re- um, such a reminder just to keep doing my purpose in season in out of season, because you never know who's who's watching. You never know when the match is gonna strike. Keep going. Don't give up. You know God has put place you there. Let nothing move you because you, you don't know. On a regular day, do a regular thing. God could just take you from here to there. And God's saying right now, despise not the time of small beginnings. Because small beginnings is training ground. It's just training ground. Never neglect your training ground. Because your training ground gives you skills, gives you lessons that you will need in your later life. And know that you are purpose to do what you're doing right now. We often think purpose is a big thing, and it could be, but it doesn't have to be. If the Lord has purposed you to be a mom, be a mom. That's awesome. If the Lord has purposed you uh, to do our jobs around your health uh, for other people, do that. Your purpose is wherever God has you right now. And if just submit yourself to the Lord. And if he chooses to move you, he'll move you in his time. Just keep going and keep understanding that you are right where God wants you to be. You are where he has you for a reason and for a season. And just keep going and going and going. And and then if he wants to move you, he will. But know that your purpose is never too small to affect people's lives in a positive way. Know that the way you treat people now is very important. Always treat people with kindness and respect because you never know what God has planned for those people in your life. Because he, uh, Hans Christian Anderson, was just doing what he does. He was doing what he does in jail. He was doing what he does um, with the little boy. And that little boy's father uh, was the one to put his story in the paper and catapult him into a new life and a new destiny. He was just doing what he always did. Sometimes we think purpose has to be this big thing. I think I think most times purpose is wherever the Lord has you. And if he chooses to move you, he will move you. And everything that you're seeing will come to pass, but it'll, it will have to happen in his time when he wills it. Because if you, if you make it happen, you'll have to keep it. And there's no, there's no way that you could keep it without him. You can try, but you'll wear yourself out fast. I don't want anything that the Lord has it ordained for me. I don't want to run before him, and I don't want to be too late. I just want to uh, be in step with him. And he's saying, just be in step with me. Don't run ahead of me. Don't try and uh, go before me. Just 
don't try and go after me. Just just go and step with me. And so that's the Anderson part of my sermon. Anderson part of my sermon. Um, what I wanted to talk about it also is just to tell you that you are loved, you are loved, you are just, um, you are loved, you are cared for, he loves you, he loves you. And all those, all of that that I talked about before about purpose, it's because of his love for you. He loves you so much that he's placed in you something that you are meant to give to the world. And the greatest gift you can give to the world is your love. And I think that's what the world is missing. There are so many people just longing and crying for love. Love, and it's the greatest gift. And I'm here to tell you that you don't have to be anything. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to, um, you don't have to be somebody to be loved. He loves you just the way you are. And the most amazing thing in this world if, is if you can look back and know that you are loved. And the and that's the thing about purpose too. Purpose is not just for you. It's about the lives you touch. Because all those stories that Hans Christian Andersen came up with for all those children. We are still telling them today. And um, that's because of his love for children that he created all those stories because he didn't want to see a person, a child sad or downtrodden or whatever. And th that love caused him to affect children's life. If your purpose is only to make you strong, is to make your name known, that's not purpose. Your purpose is always to share, care, and and be there for, for someone else. Your purpose is ultimately not for yourself. It's to give out to the world something that God wants you to give out. And he wants me to tell you today that you are, lo you are loved. And if your purpose doesn't first come from the fact that you love people and love what you do or, or want to share something with the world, some gift, some talent, that God has given you, it's not purpose, it's self-aggrandizement. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't think of yourself. You have to think of yourself first, but ultimately, um, your purpose is not for you. Will, will people be enhanced by what you have to give? That's why you cannot give up because there are several people waiting for what you have to give, wanting, desperate for what you have to show to the world, the unique perspective that you have, the unique understanding that you have of your craft. Um, people are waiting for it. People need the tips and tricks you have um, for raising children. People need the tips and tricks you have for arts and crafts or whatever. People need, people need your gift. 
up. First of all, I believe the Father need, needs your gift and he needs you, but not in a vain way. He needs you in a humble way. In a humble way. If he, if you think that he needs you in a vain way, no, no, no. He doesn't need your your vainness. He doesn't need you because you're all that in the mega chips. He needs you in humility. So come to him with humility and he can use you. But vainness and thinking that you're all that, he doesn't need that. He needs you in humility. And ask him today to give you a humble heart. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done. And thank you, Lord, for what you're about to do. Thank you, Lord, for what you've taught us. Thank you, Lord, for what you've shown us. Thank you, Lord, for you for using me to espound your word. And thank you, Lord, for using this movie and this song to bring your truth to the world. I am your humble servant. I'm just honored that you will, that you found, um, that you found, uh, that you found a way to use this Toronto girl for your glory. I'm so, I'm so honored that you saw fit to just just usher me into into this wonderful purpose that you have for me. Jesus, I thank you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I um, bow myself down to you. In the name of Jesus. And the Lord is wanting a genuine heart. The Lord is wanting a genuine heart. For him. Don't worry about all the stuff you have to work on and whatever. He'll get rid of all that stuff if you just avail yourself to him and he will make you into what he wants you to be. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. There's a king inside you. There's a queen inside you that he wants to bring out of you. Thank you, Lord, for just being who you are. Thank you. Okay, guys. See you later. Bye. We all want to make our place in this world. We all want our voices to be heard. Everyone wants a chance to be someone. We all have dreams we need to dream. Sweeter than any star. We can reach just when we reach and find you found someone. You hold this world for Christ to say It's the greatest gift this life can bring. If you can look back and know that you would love. You were loved by someone and touched by someone, held by someone, then summoned to someone, loved somebody, touched somebody's heart along the way. You can look back and say, hey. You and I. 
You can have diamonds in your hands. Have all the riches in the land. But without love, you don't really have a thing. And if someone cares that you're alive, if someone finds some world in your eyes, that's when you know. That you have all you need. You hold this world's most priceless prize. The sweetest treasure in this life. If you can look back and know that you were loved. You were loved by someone and touched by someone, held by someone, meant something to someone, loved somebody, touched somebody's heart along the way, you can look back and say, you and love, so many roads that you can take. Whatever way you go, then take that road and then it's better you should know. You were loved by someone and touched by someone, held by someone, and something something to someone, loved somebody. Touch the mighty tower along the way. You can look back and say, You did okay. You were loved. So remember to tell that one. You are loved. You. Okay, guys, that's my rendition of You Were Loved. Um, and as I was singing it, I thought of um, the chorus when it says, you, you were loved by someone, touched by someone, held by someone, meant something to, to someone. Uh, love somebody, touch somebody's heart along the way. That's what purpose brings out. Purpose is another way of showing your love to somebody. Um, Because if your purpose doesn't uh, touch some, that touch somebody, make make sure somebody's okay, um, if your purpose doesn't do any of those things, is it really purpose or is it self aggrandizement? Like like your purpose should touch other people, not only your life. Your purpose should should be there to enhance the life of people. You were it should be there to uh love somebody touch somebody, hold somebody when they're down. Touch somebody's heart. Make them want to be a better person. So all of these uh, videos that I see on YouTube, putting other uh, people down, putting other preachers down, they may make a lot of money, but is it your purpose to do that? Or are you just doing that because you know that it's clickbait and that it's it's not enhancing anybody. It's not telling them that Jesus loves them or Jesus died for them. You're just critiquing someone else's pain. You're just critiquing what someone else uh, in their pain, in their struggle, 
what they what they've uh, figured out in their their lives, and I th- and I think that is wrong. And I've seen it way too much, and I don't think the Lord is happy with all those YouTubers that do that, that only put videos out to put people down instead of lifting people up. We need to use social media to lift people up. We need to understand that people that um, that social media is a tool that we need to use to lift people up, not tear people down. And if you don't understand why a person said it or whatever, you don't need to say anything. What you need to do is get down on your knees and not on your keys. You need to get on your knees and pray for that person. Pray for their understanding. Pray that God be with them, be with their family. Because that every sermon or everything that you're critiquing, it's something that they've learned that they fought hard for, that they've cried for, that they've, like, that they've experienced in their life. And if they're, and if they're wrong, God's God enough to correct them. You don't have to correct them. I think we're, we're in a culture where we just want to correct and condemn. We don't have to correct them. God is big enough to do that. The people that God has set in their lives is are big enough to do that. We don't have to put up videos of people we don't even know, of situations we don't even understand, just to get views so YouTube can pay us. No, no, no. No, the first reason that anyone should be on YouTube is their love for people and and they're wanting to see people thrive or have fun. You should not be on YouTube just for having like, you know, just for putting people down and let me see what gets the most views. It might get the most views, but is that the best use of the skill that God has given you? And yeah, I've had people uh, subscribe to me and unsubscribe to me because I don't subscribe to them. I'll tell you this right now. I don't subscribe to anyone who is talking foolishness and just wants a subscription. I subscribe uh, to people that add to my life, that that have something to say, that like you know whose videos totally add to my life, whose videos totally enhance my life in a positive way, or maybe I like their singing or what they bring to the table. I'm not going to subscribe to anyone just because. I need a subscription, so let's subscribe. No, my time and what God has given to me is so much more valuable than that. Value what you have. Value what you have, and you don't need to rip off of other people. You don't need to analyze other people's pain because it'll get you more views. Because you know what? You know what, as a preacher myself, you know what I go through to to just bring a sermon to you? Sometimes it's absolute hell that I've gone through. Absolute hell that God has, of what God has taught me. And sometimes it's what he tells me to tell you, but most times it's absolute hell Um of the things that God has taught me. And for people to cre- critique the absolute hell that God has um, 
brought me through. It is just so unnecessary. We lift each other's, we lift each other up, we bear each other's burdens. We don't, our assignment is not to pull each other down. Our assignment, especially as Christian podcasters, is to lift other people up. It's not to be some kind of entertainment show. Let me talk about what the preacher talked about. Let me rip them apart because I don't know them so I can rip them apart. No, you can't. That is God's son. That is God's daughter. And he needs you to be praying for them, not critiquing what they said on the pulpit, not not ripping them apart with your with your uh, analysis or whatever. He says, if you see someone uh, caught in the fall, to restore them. We can talk about it. We can talk about how upset we are. And if we, it's different when we are, um, when we are processing pain. If you are processing your pain, that's different. But if you're putting it up for just gossip and views, that's that's another thing. But if you're putting it up to say, my heart's so grieved, I'm processing pain. And even if you're processing pain, you don't have to, to mention who. You can just say you're processing pain about this and this situation and talk about you and talk about how it makes you feel. And that's okay because we all, our anger needs to go somewhere, but just keep in mind why you're doing it. Are you doing it for views? Or are you doing it to truly process? Processing is good gossiping and and putting videos for views it's a terrible thing and and remember in God's eyes we all are brothers and sisters we need to embrace our brothers and sisters and pray for our brothers and sisters not malign and disgrace them because usually they're already feeling maligned and disgraced already. Lord help us. Bye, guys. See you next week.